I had my stupid pride, but Paul came to see me. He went out of his way to come and apologize. I never did what I should have. I just focused on blaming others. Compared to me, he is doing great. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rodster review. Today I will be reviewing the second core of Mushiko Tente Jobless Reincarnation's first season. I watched and reviewed the first part about seven months ago and I was very impressed with the anime then and now I can confidently say that this is becoming one of my favorite anime. This part adapted three arcs from the web novel and I intend to give my thoughts and opinions about each arc one by one. With that being said, let's get into the review. This story picked up right where it left off from the last part. Rudius and Eris are both traveling with Rugerd in hopes of making it back home. Thus begins the Voyage arc. This arc contained four episodes and it had good comedy, action, and even drama. A lot of the comical parts were near the beginning, the interactions with the demon lord definitely got a few laughs out of me, and the episode where Roxy and her party were looking for Arudius was also hilarious. Most of the humor is sexual and I know that a lot of people see that as cheap comedy, but it got me laughing so I can't really complain. Although as much as I did like Roxy's half an episode adventure, I will say that it was a little frustrating that she pretty much crossed paths with Rudius' party, yet still missed him. I guess I'm just a little anxious to see their reunion, and it is a little annoying that it has been postponed for now. This arc got more tension in action when Rudius and his party dead end took on a mission to save some beast children. I honestly thought that Rudius was going to be executed when he was imprisoned, but he wasn't. This demonstrated that although these were beast people, they were not savages. Rather, they were very civilized, and that small piece of information just added that much more to the world building. It was also great to see Rudius attempt to save the people who imprisoned him, because that let me know that Rudius isn't as selfish as he may seem. He really has developed into what some may call a true hero. We get to see more of his selflessness when he helps Eris reconnect with her new friends before they left. Even though he is still a pervert, it seems that he is actually starting to become more caring and nurturing of other people. The reunion arc has three episodes, and it is one of the most emotional arcs up until this point. As the name suggests, this arc focuses on the reunion between Rudius and his long lost father, Paul. I know that a lot of people hated Paul since he cheated on his wife in the last part, and the beginning of this arc definitely made that crowd hate him more. He acted like such a jerk at the beginning that even I started to dislike him a bit. However, after learning about how much he had lost, it was very difficult for me to hate him. Up until this arc, I didn't realize that Rudius wasn't the only one affected by the teleportation. I mean, I had my suspicions, but I had no idea how large the scale of the teleportation disaster was. But I believe I was unaware this entire time because we have been looking at this through the perspective of Rudius. While Paul was out of line, he was kind of correct that Rudius had been treating this entire journey like a game. Rudius himself realized this and it caused him to become more depressed. But seeing both Rudius and Paul make up was one of the best things ever. I loved the flashback to Rudius' old life as it reminded me that he doesn't want to make the same mistakes that he did in his previous life. He had a new chance and a shot at redemption and he cannot throw it away. And the scenes with Eris were also very cute. Watching her attempt to comfort Rudius just goes to show that she is a different person than she was at the start of the show. She used to only care about herself, so seeing her learn how to care for another was very adorable. I also loved getting to see Roxy's reunion with her parents. I felt really bad that she wasn't able to communicate with her own people, and I was easily able to put myself in her shoes. But that side story had a happy ending to it as well, especially since she finally got a lead onto Rudius' location. The only part of this arc that I didn't really like was the lack of interaction between Rudius and his sister. It felt like she was kind of just there, and I expected her to be a somewhat relevant character in a reunion arc. The best part about this arc was the change in direction. At first, Rudius' primary goal was to get back home. Now he wants to find and rescue his missing family and friends. Again, this just goes to show that Rudius is more than just a pervert. He is a hero. <laughs> Yeah! 
the last arc of this season was the Homecoming arc. It contained a total of five episodes, which means that it is currently the longest arc of Mushiko Tensei. This arc can be split into three smaller subsections. The Lilia and Aisha rescue, the encounter with Dragon God Oristed, and the breakup of Dead End. The first part made up for what the last arc lacked by including more interaction with Rudeus and his half-sister. I thought that her reasons for hating her older brother were very funny and it somewhat gave a real consequence for Rudeus' perverted actions. However, if I am being honest, the interactions between Rudeus and Aisha were the only parts of this section that I enjoyed. The resolution from saving Lilia from that pervy prince was too sudden and it seemed as if Rudeus didn't have to put in any actual work to do so. The second section of this arc, the battle with the dragon god Orsted, was amazing. This fight is definitely my favorite part of this core, maybe even of this entire season. Up until this point, Rudeus was pretty much untouchable. I mean, there were moments when he messed up and he was close to death, but in this battle, his entire party was just outclassed. This moment let the audience know that even though Rudeus is talented for his age, he still has a long way to go before he can go head to head with one of the strongest beings alive. Not to mention the animation during that fight was amazing. The animation for this show is usually amazing but Studio Bind really outdid themselves for this fight. And at the end, I actually did believe that Rudeus was going to die. Since this is a show about reincarnation, I thought that he might die and get reborn elsewhere. I am glad that Rudeus is able to survive but it was a really tense moment for me and it is definitely setting up some something huge in the future. The last part, the breakup of Dead End, was pure pain and sorrow. I've grown attached to their group dynamic, so seeing Ruger, Eris, and Rudius go their separate ways definitely hurt a bit. But I think what hurt the most was seeing Rudius get abandoned. It felt like it took forever for Rudius to build a new life and family, and it got destroyed right in front of him. But of course, Rudius eventually found the strength to get up and keep going, making for a perfect end to a great season. Overall, I guess you could say I really enjoyed this series. If you are hesitant to start for any reason, I highly recommend that you give it a chance. I'd honestly give this season a 9.3 out of 10 because it wasn't perfect, but it was one of the best anime that I've watched in the past couple of years. I don't believe a second season has been announced yet, but I hope we get one soon. I can't wait to see where Rudeus' adventure goes. The last episode gave me two things to look forward to, the location of Rudeus' mother and the return of Sylphette who we haven't seen since the first arc of this series. All in all, I am very excited to see this show return soon. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and to blast that subscribe button to see more Mushiko Tensei and anime content on this channel. And leave your thoughts on the series as a whole in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.